A very good morning, very good afternoon, very good evening, everyone, guys. I hope that all of you are doing well, and I hope that all of you are doing great. Thank you so much for joining today's session, guys. It's an immense pleasure to meet all of you. Thanks for taking all the time from your busy schedule. My name is Deepak, and uh, I'm also one of the lead instructor with Edureka. I take care of uh, various programs. Out of which Azure is one of those. Uh, I'm a certified engineer in Azure. I have done various certification like um, you know, AZ200, AZ303, 304, which is now AZ305. Likewise, I have done multiple certifications. So likewise, the people who are uh, associated with us, they are, um, you know, like uh, I would say the instructors are the market leaders. They have been working in the industry for a long time. Now, um, let's just take a look at the agenda. What are different topics uh, that we are going to cover today? So today we will talk about what exactly is Azure. You know, I mean, what is the use case of having Azure? Why we use it? I mean, is it really required? Um, and uh, like, can we get rid of the Azure and all? Um, uh, you know, why Azure has a more market share and all such kind of things we are going to discuss today. And then uh, post that, we will talk about what is uh, DA, which is data analytics. What exactly is data analytics? What exactly it stands for? Um, what, uh, what is the use case of having data analytics? Uh, what is cloud analytics? Um, you know, having, what is the advantage of having, uh, you know, cloud analytics, the benefit of cloud analytics? Uh, you know, um, who is a data engineer? RNR, which is roles and responsibility of uh, data engineer, um, the salary trained um, is your data engineer uh, skills which are being required, and RNR. RNR means the roles and responsibility of uh, Azure data engineer. Let's say if you are going to have a job of Azure data engineer, what are going to be the normal RNR? You know, like in the day-to-day -day life, what are the normal roles? Uh, what are the normal responsibilities that you're going to get? Like what kind of work that you're going to do if you are going to become a data engineer? So that is something uh, that we are going to discuss in uh, today's uh, class. If you want, uh, you know, any, any clarification or anything, feel free to ask, and we'll be more than happy, you know, happy to help you. Now, moving on, just taking a look at the career path, guys. Like, how exactly is going to be, um, you know, the learning path once you're going to enroll for the course? Well, like, what are the different things that we are going to cover? How exactly the structure is going to look like? So we have divided the um, entire course into small, small modules. So let me just give you a quick walkthrough in a few seconds. In the very first class, you want to learn about, uh, you know, Microsoft Azure Solution Architect training. Uh, you know, what is Azure? What is the need of Azure? Different features of it. Why Azure has more market share, the different type of services and the offering that they have with the practical hands-on. In the second class, you are going to learn about Azure virtual machines. Um, is what are different type of virtual machines you can create in Azure? The different components uh, which are required to uh, create a virtual machine. The different components like um, your, uh, you know, you require a resource group uh, or be below that at a granular level, you require a subscription. In subscription, you want to create a resource group. In a resource group, you are going to create the actual resource that you are going to have. So that you're going to learn, you know, how you can create different type of Azure virtual machine. One of the biggest myth people have that since this is a cloud service, you can network and all, which is not true. That's something you are going to see that as well, like how you can create your own network segment, your own subnets, your own public IP address, private IP address, static, dynamic, all this kind of thing you're going to uh, learn with practical hands-on in detail. In the third class, you're going to learn about about Azure EMSs and the Variability Zones. You know, Azure Virtual Machine Scale Set, what exactly that is, um, you know, the Availability Zones. What are the different type of uh, Availability Zones that we, uh, that we have uh, in Azure uh, with the practical hands-on in detail. Next, in, your, uh, in the fourth class, fourth module, you're going to learn about Azure Application Services, its features, the different type of Azure Application Services you have, like logic applications, function applications, you know, I mean, uh, service, we don't require even any kind of platform as well, how you can just write the functions directly and use the existing templates, all such kind of things you're going to learn with the practical hands-on detail. 
Also, you will be able to see that how exactly you can perform automation. Let's say if I am working as an administrator in my organization, I want to perform automation on virtual machines, like how I can uh, create virtual machine with the help of script, how I can delete virtual machines with the help of script, all this kind of things you're going to learn as well with the practical hands-on. In the fifth class, you're going to learn about is your hybrid connectivity, um, you know, uh, it's uh, what are different ways with the help of which you can connect, how you can recover in the case of failure with the practical hands-on. In the sixth class, you will learn about Azure storage solution and design patterns. Azure offers four different types of storage solution, blog, file cube table um you know like why azure has four different type of offerings which storage solution you should use in which given scenario like um you want to do a streaming so uh, video streaming and all which storage solution you use you want to store the files which storage solution you should use you want to store the data in the database which storage solution you should use all these kind of things you're going to learn with the practical hands-on in the seventh class you will learn about is your kubernetes service uh you know what exactly uh, is kubernetes how you can integrate docker um you know how you can leverage a kubernetes cluster in azure all these kind of things with the practical hands-on you will learn in the eighth class you will learn about is your directory and rbac which is role-based access control Let's say in your organization, you already had on-premise users. I think in, in every organization you will have, whether you are a big organization or a small organization. Now, let's say you were using Active Directory. Um, let's say there's a big organization where they, where they have 500,000 users, like 5 lakh users. Now, they can't uh, create 5 lakh accounts. So for that, Azure provides you an, uh, uh, you know, an option of a, uh, Azure Active Directory, AAD. Uh, how you can manage your on-premise environment with Azure, how you can uh, even link your on-premise users with Azure, all such kind of things you are going to learn with the practical hands-on, how you can provide different level of access with the practical hands-on you will learn. In the ninth class, you will learn about is your monitoring and inside services, the different type of monitoring services you can have, um, you know, like uh, what are the different type of monitoring services that you have, what type of different components if you can monitor uh, at the same time, how you can create an alert like how if you want to do an automation like auto scaling you want to uh you know create a kind of condition when let's say there are um you know like the cpu utilization is like let's say more than 80 percent the resources should be up automatically the ram and the heart rate when the cpu utilization is down the resources should go down automatically so auto scaling how you can configure it all such things you will learn with the practical hands-on in the last class, you will learn about DAM, which is design as your migration, which is more of a critical and important thing. If you want to migrate the entire infra from on-premise to cloud or cloud to on-premise, all you can do with the practical hands-on you will do. And at the end, you are going to become a superhero like this. I'm just kidding. You are going to be, become a superhero uh, who will have a lot of knowledge, to be honest. Now, let's get started, guys. Uh, what exactly is this your? I mean, why we need Azure? So Azure is a cloud computing service, so which is given by Microsoft. You know, Azure is not the only solution that we have in the market. We have different type of uh, cloud solutions. Like Amazon has their own cloud solution, which is known as AWS, which is Amazon Web Services. Google have their own cloud solution, which is known as GCP. Likewise, Microsoft has their own cloud solution, which is known as Azure. So one, one of the biggest advantage uh, that you are going to have um, in the case of Azure is that since this is owned by Microsoft and you know that Microsoft has a great market share, like for example, you talk about programming, you have Visual Studio C Sharp, right, owned by Microsoft, you talk about database, like every where they have the footprint so that is the reason azure has more precedence like active directory this is a proprietary of microsoft you know so you can integrate uh microsoft solutions with azure very easily plus you get more discount since in majority of the organizations uh, they use microsoft um, you know systems only like microsoft operating systems so microsoft azure is a set of cloud services which helps your organization to meet challenges uh, where you can use your favorite tools and uh, frameworks. Uh, it's a freedom to build, manage, and deploy applications on a massive global network. So, I Aman, mean, there are uh, so many different uh, zero security trainings that I offer. Like one of the biggest thing is you know dedicated sessions on the keyboard, wherein uh, you know you want to use a key management solutions, PKI. You want to use IAM for that. You know, RBAC, all such kind of things are covered into that that I you know cover. Okay. Now, moving on, I'm um, talking about Azure features. What are different type of Azure features we have? So there are so many 
different type of features you have like first is on demand provisioning uh, wherein you want to create any kind of services depending on your requirement you can create the service and you can just stop the services second is scalability in minutes if you want to uh, define the criteria based on which you can scale up the entire resources you can scale down the entire resources depending on your requirement third is pay as you consume think like a unit of electricity whatever the kind of uh, usage you are going to have you are going to pay for that only so whatever the kind of consumption you have you are going to pay for that apart from that you are not going to pay for any other thing next is abstract resources where you are going to focus on the need or your requirement not the hardware specification next is efficiency of experts so you are going to utilize your knowledge uh, you know like uh, your experience your knowledge on that so you are going to just uh, focus on that only and uh, you don't have to just focus on the other areas. You don't have to focus on other things. And last but not the least, which is measurable. So everything that you're doing in Azure is measurable. You can always go back and you can see that, you know, whatever the kind of stuff that you have done. Uh, at the same time, you can always uh, go back if you have any kind of confusion in the billings. Now talking about why DA. And before that, I talk about what exactly is DA, what exactly is data analytics. So data analytics refer to the techniques to analyze data to enhance productivity and enhance the business gain. Think about it, guys. If I'm going to tell you something theoretically, uh, instead of that, if I'm going to show you some visualization, it will be easy for you. For example, if I will tell you that I, on this land, I'm going to construct a 200 floor building. Instead of that, I'm going to show you some visualization. You will be able to understand in a better way. So that's something uh, happens in the case of data analytics, which is there in the Azure. Now here in this case, you have two things, the business administration and exploratory data analysis. Uh, if you are going to combine together, it will have the more visualized and sensible view. Plus it will help you to increase the revenue in your organization. Now talking about why data analytics, it has so many advantages like you, whatever the kind of hidden information that you have, you can get it from here uh, with the visualization. You want to create a report because, you know, the management people, they are more visually for the reports. You know, management people need some kind of a way through which they can uh, visualize, you know, like uh, whether it's going to be profitable, non-profitable, you know, the reports, the pie charts, the graphs that you can create very easily. Next is you can perform market analysis, like you can see that whatever the kind of thought process you have for the product is it going to work in the market or not and last is you know, it's going to improve the business requirement so uh, it's going to improve the business requirement and uh, the visibility on the business as well so all such kind of things are going to be uh, available here which is going to give you the huge advantage now these are the different type of uh, i would say the, the advantages that you get with data analytics now talking about what is cloud analytics so cloud analytics is a service which is going to run uh, you know data analysis and business intelligence in public or private cloud what is public cloud public cloud is something which is being available uh, you know like on outside world so you can say in the public cloud your storage and data processing is going to be publicly accessible on multi tenant architecture it's going to be shared platform between different uh, people so you are just going to share the it systems but not the data in the case of private cloud, it's going to be accessible only to one company where it's going to act as, as an extension of the company's IT infrastructure. So in terms of data privacy and security, private cloud is always going to be winner as compared to public. The third one, even one more category you have is a hybrid cloud, which is a combination of both public and private. Where in this case, uh, you know, this is more effective when your small amount of data is sensitive which has to be stored on a, uh, you know, like a private cloud. So that's something, it's an advantage that you get with the case of hybrid, where you uh, combine both the features, you combine both the advantages. Now, moving on, talking about like, what are the different type of benefits that you're going to get in the case of uh, cloud analytics? One of the biggest benefit is flexibility. You want to add, you want to remove, um, you know, you want to have more features and all you can do it very easily because when uh, companies have uh, so many changing needs like for example the company's requirement are not static company's requirement are not fixed so if uh, like for example if i my company requirement is not fixed and uh, for, you know instead of that i just uh, created 200 servers 500 machines so if i created that much in front and uh, later on after purchasing 500 servers i realized that no i like i purchased 500 linux servers but i had a requirement of 500 windows servers what I will do. It's going to be wasted for me, right? You uh, Instead of that, you can just create the stuff on the cloud and uh, leverage it and then take advantage of it. If you don't need it, just simply remove it and you are not going to be built. So that is the reason in terms of uh, effectiveness, it's more effective and less uh, expensive.
The next is scalability and agility. Now, if you want to scale up the resources, scale down the resources, you can do uh, at the sake of ease, and it's very, very cost effective. The third is data consultation. If you want to combine data from different sources, you can, and you're going to have a generic data being available to you, which can be used for your applications. Now, who is a data engineer? So a data engineer is uh, one who develops, construct, test, and maintain the complete architecture of the large uh, scale processing systems. Now, if you talk about in terms of skill set that you require, the various things you should know, like data warehousing, you know, ETL, you should have advanced programming knowledge, you should have knowledge in Adobe, uh, and you should have in-depth knowledge of SQL, you should know data architecture, machine learning, you know, I mean, uh, in terms of RNR, uh, you are going to be the one who is going to develop, test, and maintain the architectures. You are going to develop data set processes. You are going to deploy ML and statistical method. You are going to have predictive and prescriptive modeling. You are going to find the hidden patterns. Now, in terms of salary, guys, in US, you can earn an average package of $92,000 per annum. In India, you can have a package of 8.3 lakh rupees per annum. Talking about Azure Data Engineer. So Azure Data Engineers design and implement the management, monitoring, and security and privacy of data using full stack of Azure data services to satisfy uh, business needs. Now, if you talk about different skills that you require for Azure Data Engineer, um, you should have understanding of evolving landscape. You should know the difference between the on-premise and cloud. Something which is hosted at your office, it's going to be on-premise. Something which is hosted on you know, like a cloud, uh, again, it's a cloud platform like Azure. You should have understanding of different business use cases for which you can leverage cloud technology. You should know the difference that in which case you should use cloud or you should use on-premise. Now, in terms of certification, which is uh, needed for a job in Azure Data Engineering is you have to be uh, Microsoft certified Azure Data Engineer Associate. So this uh, has two different certifications, which is DP200 and DP201. In terms of roles and responsibility of Azure Data Engineer, you are going to work with external partners for bringing the data into the organization. You are going to design and maintain database schemas. You are going to work with external resources on large projects. You are going to collaborate with internal technical person for troubleshooting or different issues. In terms of salary trend, uh, if we talk about for uh, Azure uh, Data Engineer, they have like a bit more salary. In India, um, you know, they, they can earn 7.37, but in US, you can earn a package of $150,000 per annum. In talking about learning part for Azure Data Engineer, guys, uh, you're going to start with Azure Data Storage Services, different type of Azure Storage Services you have, um, the Azure Database Services, different tools, the BI stack, and the programming skills. So all such things you're going to learn. In storage services, like I said, you have four different types of storages, blob, file, queue, and table that you're going to learn uh, in which specific case you can use it, uh, which is best. Uh, the different type of Azure database services you have, like SQL database, document DB, Redis cache, the difference between them, and which one you have to use for which given scenario. Different tools like TableU, Alteryx, uh, Power BI that you're going to learn. The Microsoft BI stack, SSIS, SSRS, SQL servers, SSS, so that you want to learn programming skills uh, like for Python, R, all such kind of things and learning you're going to have. So it was an immense pleasure to meet all of you guys. Thank you so much. Have a great evening here. Bye bye. Take care.